Hey, what is going on everyone? What a crazy time we are in. I don't know about you, but I've never been through a global pandemic. This is my first one and it's been kind of nuts. I was just down in Texas filming a series of commercials and in the middle of the shoot, like literally on set, we go to lunch. I'm called into the trailer with the producers and they say, we're canceling the shoot. Like in the middle of the shoot day, we, we were still had cameras out and everything. They decided to cancel the shoot, but that shoot's canceled. And the follow-up shoot for that series of commercials is canceled as well because it was supposed to be in California. So kind of crazy. I've never had a shoot canceled in the middle of the day. I don't think I've really had many shoots canceled, period, at least not for a global pandemic. Also too, what happened in Texas is you can see this giant red mark on my face. I got bit up by spiders in my hotel room like crazy. I'm this is finally dying down here. I promise you it's not corona or anything, but it was a giant like, like, tumor on the side of my head here on the shoot. Every time I come to set and see someone new, they're always like, oh God, and like when they would see this giant red thing, but it's finally dying down. And this is actually an old scar I have, so it looked extra big. One really cool thing about that shoot, even though it got canceled, is I got to shoot on the C500 for the first time. We had three of them. Can't really talk much about these commercial shoots. That's the one thing about shooting commercials is they're so overprotective about leaking any information about it. So I can't even tell you the client, can't even tell you what I was shooting, but I can tell you the camera I was using, C500. Uh, and I was really impressed with the latitude on it. I'll do a bigger review. I actually just got my FX9 in. I'll, I'll show you that right now. Not this, this is although part of everything I'm buying or unboxing here. What else we got? Ooh, Metabones, PL. This is the E-mount to PL, but here we are. Please read instruction manual. Nope. Haha, -ha, here it is. The FX9. I can already tell that there is gonna be a lot of stuff that I will and will not like about this new panel. But the main reason why you get an FX9 is for this dial right here, the variable ND. Essentially, you can just lock in your iris all day and just dial this guy in. But anyways, I'm not doing a review about this guy right now. I will later this week once I've shot a bit more with it. But right now, I wanna talk about zoom lenses versus Prime lenses. Primes. And there's a lot of videos out there already talking about the subject and they talk about the technical sides, but I wanna talk more of the theory about how it actually impacts your movie if you decide to shoot on prime lenses or zoom lenses. And these days I tend to only shoot on prime lenses when I can. And that's not to say I don't like zoom lenses. Actually, I shot my entire film Riscate on this lens right here, except for like maybe two shots were on other zoom lenses but I shot the entire thing on this 24 to 70. And this is a Canon Series 1. You might be like, well, why don't you shoot it on a Series 2 lens? The Series 1 I like because it's a little more organic, if I can use an overused term. I find that the Series 2 is amazing. It's super sharp, but that's the thing. It's almost too sharp. I like the bokeh, bokeh, however you want to pronounce it. I'm Canadian, eh? But this lens, I love it. It's amazing. It gave me such a good range. Riscate was a film where I didn't know what I was walking into. There was chaos around me all the time and I needed to be able to change focal lenses on the fly because I didn't have the advantage of having a camera assistant with me or really being able to travel with much gear at all. I was crammed into the corners of ambulances. But kind of why I tend to shoot on prime lenses like the Sigma 24 art series here, I find that they are a bit more cinematic per se as in that you can really isolate your character from the background. You can really draw the person into the story. But let's talk a couple of reasons why you would choose a zoom lens over a prime lens or vice versa. First off, let's talk about the main differences between a zoom lens and a prime lens. And those differences are bokeh or bokeh, however you want to say it. I'm saying bokeh for this video. Your bokeh, which is essentially the blurry part of your image that's not in focus. The speed of the lens, which is how much light it can let in, your, your stop range, how low of an f-stop you can go. The sharpness of a lens, that's a huge difference. And I would say the other category would be flexibility. So first off, bokeh, well, if you can see in this footage here that I shot in the office, there is always gonna be a more interesting bokeh, I would say, on a prime lens. You can get more shallow on a prime lens. So you see in this first shot here on the 24 mil, which I shot here, 
on the 24 to 70, you can see that the background is still blurred, but you actually are getting a large amount of depth of field. You're seeing a lot into the background. Where if you cut over here onto the 24 mil and the Sigma, you can see that there's so much more blur in the background. And I find that bokeh more interesting and we're drawn more into the character. And for me, that makes these wide shots very cinematic just by having that ability to go on a low stop range and really get rid of the background. Now I actually shot all this on the FX9 so you can see kind of some of the power of the camera, but I'm just shooting it here in the office with the skylight so it's nothing too special. I'm gonna be doing a full review of the FX9. I'm very excited to beat the crap out of that camera and pick it apart because there's some things already I love about it and there's some things that Dear God, Sony, what were you thinking? Why don't you talk to us before you release a camera? But anyways, we're not talking cameras, we're talking about lenses right now. Number two, as I was mentioning, is the speed. So this lens is a 2.8 that's fast, not the fastest, but what that doesn't allow you to do is isolate the character from the background as much as a camera, a lens like this, which is a 1.4. And man, this lens is still so sharp at 1.4, I love it, I'm very impressed with it. Number two would be the sharpness. Typically, a prime lens is more sharp. It's only working with one focal range, where on a zoom lens, you can tend to get a bit soft when you're super wide and wide open. Again, if you don't have a good prime lens when you're wide open on the lens and you're trying to focus shallow on a wide shot, it can tend to be a bit soft for that focus. So again, Prime lenses tend to look a bit more sharp, and I think that's just inherently because the background is more blurred, so it looks like the subject is standing out more. Flexibility would be the last category, and what I mean by flexibility is you can run with a zoom lens, and you can get like five or six good shots in a couple minutes, because you can go wide, then you can go tight, then you can go wide, you can go medium range, and you've just stood in one place. Or with a zoom lens, you need to be able to walk that distance to get those different shots. And sometimes you need to even swap the lens out. So that's why I shot with a zoom lens for all of Riscate because I didn't have the flexibility that I would have normally liked when shooting with prime lenses. But I wanna give you guys now just four quick tips on deciding which lenses to use before you approach a shoot or maybe before you approach purchasing them if you shoot the same things over and over again. So the number one factor I would say is distance. The distance that you are from the subject will definitely decide, for me at least, whether I'm going to shoot on zoom or prime. If you're physically stuck behind a barrier, let's say you're shooting a race, like where runners are going by, or you're shooting a sports event and you're on the sideline, shooting on prime lens will be so limited because you are stuck in one place and you can't control how close or how far you are from your subject. So that's a situation where I would definitely would wanna use a zoom lens where I can't control how close I am to my subjects because being close to your subject is the best time to use prime lenses because then you can really control how much is going on in the background. You can really isolate your character. Whereas zoom lens, the further you get out on the lens, so when I start getting to 50 mil uh, and I shoot on a 50 mil lens, you'll see that they're starting to look more similar where if I shoot at 24 on a prime and 24 on a zoom, they look drastically different. So the further you start zooming in on a lens, the more it'll start looking like a prime lens in the bouquet in the shallow depth of field areas of your picture. So for me, distance from your subject really decides whether I'm gonna shoot on zoom or prime. If I'm far away and they're gonna be running around everywhere, I'll always, always go with the zoom. But if I can get in close and I can kind of control the action, I can move in and out, then I'll shoot on a prime. And I'm actually shooting a lot more of my documentary work on prime lenses because I'm just willing to take that risk of not being able to get in super close or get being too close in order to have something that's more cinematic. I'll just decide where I stand rather than just zooming in like a lazy guy. I'll walk in closer to get the shot. And I actually like being in close with a subject for a documentary. It makes it feel more personal. So number two is subject matter. What are you actually shooting? Where are you? What is going on in front of the lens? So for something like the Mercedes-Benz piece that I shot, we shot on anamorphic prime lenses, which is probably my favorite lenses in the world. We shot on the Cook's lenses, where my favorite lenses are probably the Hawk anamorphic lenses, which we use for Matthew House. Both sets of lenses are amazing. But we had control of that room. We could get in close to our subjects, we could move away. We had three lenses, and I think we only shot on two of them. So that's a situation where we had control of the environment. 
where if you're shooting something that's kinetic or it's crazy, briscate, I was still really close to my subject, but I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was gonna happen or unfold. So I decided to shoot mostly on a 24 to 70 because it allowed me to get in close on people, but then also get a wide shot of what was happening. I would say there's actually only two lenses you really need in a pinch. And for me, that's a 24 mil and a 50 mil. The 50 mil starts feeling a bit like a telephoto. It's in closer. You can really blur out the background. And the 24 mil, at least on a full frame lens, gives you a very wide shot and can help you establish an environment and help you get in close. So for me, most of these days on dock film shooting, I'm kind of just bouncing between a 24 mil and a 40 or a 50. I find those ranges kind of perfect. If I only ever could have one lens, I would shoot with a 35 mil on a full frame sensor because you can do a lot with that lens. The number three factor I would say is your look and feel. What is the visual style of your film? What are you actually shooting? Do you want this to feel dreamy, cinematic, moody? Well then I would say you wanna be on a prime lens. You really wanna draw your eyes into that subject matter. You wanna have a very interesting bokeh in the background. You want it to be blurry. You wanna really have something that has more texture in that environment that looks more interesting. Where sometimes shooting a wide shot on your prime, oop, almost dropped that, shooting a wide shot on a zoom lens won't necessarily be as cinematic. It'll start feeling like an old video camera because you're seeing everything in focus. So it's just, just a decision for you. If you're shooting sports, then yeah, you, you might not need to necessarily be on a prime lens all the time, but I don't wanna make a rule for you. It's you, you have to decide what aesthetic do you like? If you think zoom lenses look cool, then shoot the heck out of zoom lenses. Use them on all your projects if you're more comfortable that way. I'm not saying that there's any rule for what to shoot on. Again, I won cinematography awards for Riscate and I only ever shot it on one old, old lens and that's fine. This lens I think now is like 15, maybe 20 years old, maybe not 20, maybe 15 years old, it's old. And the fourth factor I would just say is price. Buying a set of prime lenses is always gonna cost more. Well, not always, but typically costs more than buying one zoom lens. 24 to 70, that covers a range of a 24 mil, 35 mil, 40, 50, and a 75, kind of like the 85 mil range. That's a whole set of lenses in one lens. So it is more affordable, but again, for me, if you're really serious about cinematography, and you have a full frame sensor, I would recommend buying a 24 mil and a 50 mil. I'll put a link below to this Sigma lens. It's my favorite lens that I have in my kit. I just love the 24 mil. It's so wide, but I can still make it feel cinematic and really draw people into the film because I can really isolate the subject. I shot so much of our film, No Country is an Island, on this 24 mil, and I've really fallen in love with it. So anyway, guys, I hope these tips helped. It was a lot all at once. Let me just recap them. If you're gonna be shooting on Prime versus Zoom, Figure out the distance. Are you close to your subjects? If you're very far away, you may want to consider zoom lenses. I often shoot on the 70 to 200. Number two is the subject matter. Is it chaos? Do you not know what's gonna happen? You may want to be on a zoom then so you can choose where you're going or you can be bold and shoot on prime lenses and just embrace what you get. I'm typically more in that category these days. I'm staying away from zooms uh, as I can. I just find that the footage just ends up looking so much more cinematic on a prime lens. Number three is your look and feel. Like I said, this doesn't always get you a shallow as a 24 mil prime would if I'm on 24 on my zoom. And number four is price. You buy two zooms, it's cheaper than buying, you know, eight prime lenses. So there's something to consider there. But guys, a lot of my work has been canceled. So I'm around here more. Maybe I'll do some Q and A's. Would love some more interaction. Would love to chat with you guys in the upcoming weeks. It could be upcoming months. We don't know what's gonna happen with this pandemic, but I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you're washing your hands. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, and I hope you're getting to spend some time with people that you normally don't get to see because you're usually at work. But we will all get through this. I know we will because our world has been through some crazy stuff over the centuries and millennia. It's been a wild ride for this earth and this won't be the thing that ends it. But thank you guys. Look below, I have some links for some of the gear we've been using and I'll be seeing you guys soon.